What's going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheetaber. Hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, we're going to be talking through the Monday night NBA slate. Had some good tournaments, not a crazy huge slate like we've had on a couple of the Mondays. So kind of like, kind of like it. Um, we're going to have some interesting early uh, value that probably won't be the same value we're talking about later today. Just just a hunch. Um, Sheets, how are you doing? I had a, I had a lousy uh, uh, NFL Sunday. Kind of on a, like a cold streak here, man. You need to get back on the right track. Um, but well, how I would like to. Say, I would like to. I would like to say that I was very, very happy that I won that 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 big prize Friday because I needed the cushion pretty big for, for yesterday's football disaster. So, um, uh, yeah, football is tough, you know. And I even talked about Jacksonville as as a team that I was going to literally force in, um, but just what didn't force them in enough. Um, and uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I had I had a stand which which had a shot with with Damian Pierce. Um, he started to not be as great and he got vultured once and then he got, then he got injured, which is a little annoying. Um, but he, that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have done too much. I, that was under the right idea to like not deal with any of these, these Seattle running backs and these cheaper running backs, just try to get Derrick Henry and these other guys in, but you had to get the rest of it right. And then, and, uh, Jacksonville was the way to do it. And, uh, Hey, shout out to the guy who won the million, million maker. I mean, yeah. he just slaughtered everybody. I mean, like he, I he won see by it like going to happen too. I saw his lineup early on, and I was like, "Oh, this is over." <laughs> yeah, and he won by like twenty points without ever a sweat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was it was amazing. Um, so good for and it was like a legit lineup. It was like some stupid lineup. It was good, no, good, no. good for him. Good yeah. for him. Um, good for him. F him. Same thing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right. <laughs> so we'll get on to today. Yeah, it was it was it was a slaughter for me, and it was really you know I have to say like it, it's always frustrating in these later week things like they. The thing they did with T. Higgins really bothered me. Like I had twenty five. Oh, I don't even. Oh, you know what? That really annoys me. That's that's really tilting. Um, and then also that then you get on top of it. What's his name gets hurt. Um, Boyd gets hurt right away. It's just like, <laughs> everybody. N- n- nothing was going to work out right. It was very very frustrating. Yeah, I had I had the great contrarian Cincinnati stacks where I would I wouldn't play Chase. I would play just Boyd and Higgins. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the double well, zeros. That's it. Exactly. You couldn't nice. do anything. Nice. Um. But, you know, it's it, the, I do think that, you know, the, the, the big Miles Sanders play, everything kind of dictated from that. Yeah. And then the huge McKinnon game when no one played. And I thought that was like I actually considered him early in the day. So there was a lot of things that could have. I was done. I was over the field on him, actually. Just yeah. uh, but the rest of the rest of the, you know, just Line because just of the rest there. of it. I do. Want, I do want to talk about like one player. I always like highlight a player, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Kind of a weird, a weird one to highlight. Like a couple of weeks ago, I highlighted McLaurin just just because of the way he played, the way he talked and the way he just looked or whatever it is. So I don't, we're not going to, we're not going to, I don't know if we do, we're not going to do probably an NFL showdown show, yeah. but if we go live, maybe, you know, I'll probably yeah, talk yeah, we'll, about we'll this a little bit because I'll think about football a little more. Mm-hmm. So I was, I want to talk about the, 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 the Chargers game last night for a minute. So the Chargers uh, Miami game. So I was a little tilted because I had uh Trent Sherfield and, and he didn't do anything. Um, but, but that's not what I want to bring up. Tyreek Hill. Okay. Like th- there are some guys that just kind of just, they get a little bit of freaking hang now and they just freaking just sit on the bench, you know, whatever it is. Dude, this guy was freaking, he could barely freaking walk like in the whole second half. Yeah. And every freaking time he goes to the bench, he tries to wrap up and he's freaking out there as much as he freaking could. And he would run a route. He would still run like three times faster than everybody else on the field. And then immediately have to come off the field because he barely could walk. I mean, that's, I mean, much props to that guy. I mean, listen, they, they didn't win anyway. But like when I see that on the, when I see that on the field, especially with a guy who's not listen, he's not particularly durable. You know what I mean? Like he's a he's a small guy, you know. Yeah. And, and to him to go out there and just freaking just keep doing it is, uh, I mean, props to him. Uh, and that was yep. again kind of a weird guy to kind of call out in a game like that. But I just happened to have noticed that. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty. I mean, he's he's amazing. Uh, he's. <laughs> Every time it feels easy to say he's the best. Re- like we say that about too many guys, probably, but he's. I mean, we talk about all the other guys being the best receiver. I think that you gotta you gotta put that guy right at the top of the list. Um, well, I would say that until you show me one week where Jefferson doesn't score two get two hundred yards, and then we, I guess that we can talk about it. I guess. Yeah. No, but no, no, it's true. But but he's Jefferson. I mean, it's, it's true. There, there's that's fair. But, I want I want to uh, throw one more thing. Tyree, like, I mean, it's funny because we talk about that like Tyreek Hill isn't having a better season, and he's right. having a better season than Jefferson is. I want to throw one more thing about the NFL. Um, so you know you have like uh, I don't know if you ever watched The Simpsons growing up or whatever it is. Yeah. Very, very, the first the first the first opening scene is you have Bart Simpson like writing something on like the chalkboard like a hundred times or whatever it is to remind himself or when he's punishing himself. I mean, I, whenever I see like 
Jalen Hurts and, and and even Trevor Lawrence with the running running the running upside like go off. I have to just remember myself to remind me like, to stop playing. And you've been telling me this for two years now to yeah. stop playing these freaking immobile drop back quarterbacks and freaking right. GPPs. Just right? so it takes so much for them to get there. It doesn't matter what the receivers project at. It doesn't matter what the total is in the game. It just and they can score fifty seven points like between the yeah. two of them. But you have to fight with these quarterbacks that put up 30s and 35s. And it's just and and it's just it's just it's you're just you're just you're just playing from behind. So right. Um for everybody to play Kirk Cousins and 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 Jared Goff. And they listen, they did fine. They did yeah, great. They but fine. but but you have to deal with like the Hertzes and the Trevor, even the Trevor Lawrences. You know, these guys with the rushing upside just have that big of an advantage. Yeah. Imagine if uh, Hertz actually has to play a fourth quarter at full like like a, like where they're trying to move the ball. It's like Man. he always three quarters, he always gets 30. All right. All right. Well, onto onto the NBA tonight because uh, we have some other some other three quarter opportunity guys today because I think there's a couple games that I'm just a little bit worried about, but uh, you know we'll get into it. All right, let's talk about it. Um, first one up, I believe, excuse me, um, is going to be Brooklyn Washington. Sheets, why don't you start off with this one and uh, I'll follow up. Yeah. So uh, I'm getting all this Washington uh, as as in, at least initial values here, and I have to say that. Those of you that are relying or watching these early projection runs that I put up there, it's a lot of, lot of I don't want to say errors, but a lot of things that are going to be have to be dealt with. We'll get to a real good example of that in a few games. But r- right now, I mean, I have the, all three of these top guys being Washington guys, like Gafford, uh, Avdia, Monty Morris. And the first thing I looked at was, I wonder why that is, is Porzingis out? And I'm like, no, he's not out. I guess it's just be still because of, uh, of Beal being out, that these guys are still – projecting yep. pretty well um so th- th- these are the guys that i'm looking at in this game um at least from a value perspective and then as i was doing a little bit of, of, of research for this um i noticed that uh rose o'neill was out which is kind of it's like it's an interesting thing yeah. for him to be out I, I don't know what that is um but and then you also have simmons and claxton back probably so well you know, well you know, without one of those guys most of the time this season well, that's the other thing is that uh, it says Claxton is questionable, but then it's, it says, says the coach is expected to play. Um, so we'll we'll yeah. keep an eye on that. Um, so on the Brooklyn side, I mean, I'm really not seeing Durant as a top play today. Um, so I'm probably off of most of the Brooklyn's unless we can figure out some way to take advantage of this Royce O'Neal being out thing, which I don't know how to do. Um, and then on the Washington side, listen, you want to play the better players, you can play Kuzma, play, uh, play Porzingis. And again, Brooklyn is still, I, you know, you're still supposed to attack this team, I think. Right. Um, so that's, that's what I got in this game. Yeah. Uh, I, I like, I like, uh, so Avdi is the obvious play. Um, or, uh, Avdi is the, Avdi is the obvious play on, on the wizards. I'd have no problem if you want to mix in Chris stops and Kuzma, it's a good matchup. And these guys do have ceilings. And I think this is a really good spot to try to attack them. Monty Morris is still questionable. It's a big questionable. Ooh. If Monty Morris is out, I am going to just be overload on Jordan Goodwin. Um, Jordan Goodwin, I'm kind of kicking myself for, for the way, you know, for Friday slate where he was the sort of the, I kept saying they only have nine bodies and I, I just didn't quite get to him. And he just went not, I mean, he put up 39 and 43 his last two games. Um, his his he's had 11 steals in the last two games, which you could say isn't sustainable, but this is a good matchup for it. So uh Go- Jordan Goodwin, um, and and uh, if there's if there's no Morris, even if Morris plays, I think I might still look at an, a long shot play. He's a little more expensive than you'd want for a long shot play, but I'm I'm certainly open to it. And then uh and look, Kevin Durant's going home. Um, I've got to do a do a little research and see what his history is in Washington, but I remember it being pretty good. Um, so Kevin Durant back in Washington uh is something that 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 uh that that I might look at. And I think Kyrie is in play. I think this is a good game environment. Uh I don't love that it's the first game of the night, but because of it, you know, lately people have sort of shifted it to the to later games and and maybe we get a little lower ownership because of it. Unless some some glaring value pops up and we lose um we lose what's his name um uh Monty Morris but I, I like Seth I like Curry Curry Durant Kyrie and Joe Harris are all in play for me Curry is probably my favorite of the value ones but I do like Durant here and I like the Avdia potentially good win and I would consider Kuzma in play as well so I think this is a good game that you could potentially stack. All right, uh, what do you got next? Uh, Miami Indiana. 
I do have Miami, Indiana, but for whatever reason, I, I don't have anybody projected for Miami yet. Um, so I'll have, I'll, have, I'll have to get back to you probably on this game. Uh, but uh, Tyrese Halliburton, 9,300, uh, will still always be a good play. Uh, 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 Miles Turner, 6,600. Um, as far as Miami goes, so I do have one thing. I don't know how these guys are projecting or who's playing or who's doing whatever. I see questionable, 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 questionable. But just 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 for funsies, you do have uh, Oladipo going back to Indiana. Um, so we'll see if enough guys are out to make him a viable. He ramped up his minutes a little bit, 19, 21, 23. Um, that's interesting, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um and so I'll have to get back to you on who I like in Miami, but that's the, that's the one thing that I just think about is him going back to whatever. And, and the usual Miami stuff with the whole, the whole team being questionable every day. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they're all questionable. Uh, they're probably all playing of, for the most part of the guys who are questionable. Uh, I think that that's a pretty safe bet. They need to win games. I keep saying this. And, uh, and, and when they have to win games, they tend to tend to lean on Jimmy Butler, especially if the games are close. So I I'm open to Jimmy Butler. Um, he's probably my favorite play in this game. And I think Oladipo is, is in play, but I, uh, I like him a little better on Fanda where he's 4k, um, not getting to a ton on, on Indiana. Maybe I'm giving a little too much respect for the history of Miami's defense. Cause they actually haven't been nearly as good this year. Um, but I, I just can't quite find a play that I love. I hate playing point guards against Miami. It's just never works. Um, Buddy healed, I guess you could consider, but I, I just think all these other plays feel a little reachy to me for, for the Miami side of, I'm sorry, for the Indiana side of it. Um, so I'm, I'm probably just looking at one of uh Butler or uh, potentially uh, 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 sorry, Oladipo. I, I don't, I think hero at, at 8k is getting the, it's, it's not even, it's not fair for what he's been playing, but it's just hard for me to get there. And everybody else just feels a little bit hard to get there. Um, so I'm probably uh, just on one of the, one of those guys, if anybody from this game. All right. Next up, you have uh, you have the Atlanta Memphis, right? Yeah. So this is a really this is a this is, this is a game where something's gonna there's maybe multiple guys get ruled out. Um, Atlanta just played a big overtime game last night. Crazy um, finish. Yeah. So I want to talk about that a little bit again. Hey, whatever. Let's talk about whatever. That was a a, a tremendous. Every that cares about actual basketball wants wants to watch it. I can't really put it up here for violating many copyright laws or whatever. But if you watch that 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 last uh that last out of bounds play that they called, it was really it was really freaking genius. And it's so funny that um there's an article that actually Bogdan Bogdanovich was actually calling out the coach for what a great job he did explaining it on the sideline for for Griffin. Mm-hmm. They had they had they had the, the little guy for for uh, the other team guarding Trey, which made sense. But they still had to make sure that they switched everything, so they had Trey set a screen for for Griffin, right? And so the guy ran with the guy switched, leaving DeRozan on 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 Trey and leaving the little tiny guy on Griffin. And they knew this was going to happen, so they were able to get a really good matchup to lob that ball into him. Really, just like well thought out conceptually, and it's amazing how it actually works sometimes. So mm-hmm. good for them, and you know, bad for them that coming off the one point overtime game at home, they have to now go on the road to Memphis and back to back. So Rough one. I can't imagine a world where Bogdan Bogdanovich plays. Um, a couple of plays I haven't projected in. I know Saberson has some doubtful. I, I, I'm i kind of with Saberson on that one. Uh, I can't imagine him playing. And we just have, really have to watch and see who who, who, who yeah. plays this game. Um, uh, this is, I don't know if this is one of the ones you're talking about, but if everybody's in for Memphis, most, well, most of the people, yeah. Then I think Atlanta could have a big problem in this game. I agree. Um, so uh, I probably will end up, oh, listen, I can't say probably because I have to see who's playing. But um, uh, I'll just have to see who's playing for Atlanta. Maybe, maybe DeAndre Hunter. I, I really have to I doubt see. he plays. Yeah, you right. I mean, he's another one. So yeah, we'll he have, just came we'll back to see. Come, coming back on a back-to-back, Capella sat on back-to-back support. Yeah, it's it's going to be a wait and see, and it might be where we get all of our value, even if the game does blow out. Actually, probably yeah. gives Atlanta a better chance if they don't play a lot of the guys who played big minutes last night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, but like you you might be talking by the end of the day, we might be saying the Kongu is like a must play or something. You know what I mean? And right right now he doesn't look like anything. But uh, Trent Forrest is the one who stands out anyway. They did give him. He played really really well in real life again in that Brooklyn game. 
and they gave him the, the start last time out, I believe. Um, so I, I have interest in Forrest, especially if Bogdanovich is out, but he's not a high producer, like fantasy point producer or anything. Uh, so I, so this is a big, just I'm probably going to have to come back to it. If, if we do get enough guys in for Atlanta, and I don't really think that it, as long as Trey plays and even if they sit Capella and Hunter and Bogdan, I, I'll take a shot on stacking this game, just hoping it stays close. It's unlikely. It worries me. But I, I mean, stacking really meaning just playing jaw on the other side because it's a tremendous matchup for them. Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, jaw and jaw is awesome without without Bane in general has been consistently. So I, it, this could be by the end of the day, the game stack or something that I'm totally fading because I'm afraid of a blowout. And I don't know which one it's going to be yet, but it is the game I was most referring to when I said you have some dangerous spots that, where teams look really good. And I think Atlanta is going to look really good by the end of the day, um, depending on who plays, of course. So have to wait and see all right you have dallas next or san antonio san antonio right? i have uh, i have oklahoma city and dallas oh, yeah, yeah dallas all right go ahead what do you what are your thoughts on this one um so you have luca who's going to be the top projected score on the slate by 10 points plus um it's being priced at you know pretty pretty healthy price at 12 7 um if value opens up and you can play them i mean i'm not gonna argue argue against it um oklahoma city he's supposed to supposed to play shea here uh 10-1 no. I, I never i never have any luck playing anybody against dallas and it's hard it's hard to do anything against dallas it seems it is um, they play really slow yeah so shea hasn't gotten, there. Shea hasn't gotten there like one time in like the last month you know what i mean yeah, I mean, okay, you want to play. I mean, Hardaway's been Hardaway's been good. <laughs> yeah, you want to play Hardaway? You can play him. You want to play Dorian Finney Smith to thirty nine hundred? I mean, he'll probably get you fifteen. You know what I mean? Or 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 more? Or he might get you zero, like he got the other. I think he had point seven five the other night. Did he really? That's, he, that's had, he played, played in thirty seven minutes. Probably minutes, he played point five point five for fantasy points. And how many minutes? Thirty eight. 20, 20 minutes only because right. I mean it could be 38. What's the difference? I mean, yeah, he'll end up with one fantasy point. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right, right. Right. Um so I guess this game is kind of kind of a cross off. I don't know. I I, I guess we'll play Luca if you feel like it. I mean that's that's the best I can come up with in this. Yeah, I, I think that Poku is probably the best tournament play in this game. The guy's just got a tremendous ceiling. He just put up 49 in the last game in a tough matchup. You don't really know what when he's gonna have minutes and when he's not. It's a high, highly volatile play in general, but both he and Jalen Williams, I think, have the upside to be considered. So I have Poku or Jalen Williams as a potential value early in the slate. And while the value, it's like one of those really low floors, you don't usually get ceilings for guys that are like legitimately Poku 10xing is not even a little bit of a surprise in this matchup. Um, so, I, so I'm going to have to consider it a little bit. Uh, you don't need to play big against Dallas. So Robinson Earl and that other value stuff doesn't really stand out for me um Dort uh just not excited about I think Giddy is Giddy and Poku are probably my favorite plays in this game uh, I don't mind Hardaway on the other side and I don't mind if you can afford Luca he's gonna put up a ton of fantasy points tonight like I don't I don't know that's the best way to build with uh with potentially limited value but I, th I think we'll get more value so I think Luca will actually end up by the end of the day probably getting a little bit of ownership um even though as of right now he's not projected for hardly any they gave him a day off, right? Yep. Saturday. Yeah. Sa I'll tell you, man, that was like the one day. I'm, I'm so glad I didn't think about playing that day. Like the the whole the whole league was off for that game that day. I think. Oh, everybody, yeah, everybody sat. I, all I know is my my phone was blowing up with these notifications, and I'm just going, "Oh my god, this is going to be a, a, a shit show of a slate." But uh, yeah, that it was it was a it was a weird one. Um. All right, let's uh. Let's move on to uh, Minnesota Portland in what I think is actually a really good game for fantasy. Um, I guess the problem is you got the Edwards is it, it, he just has not become a consistent guy yet. Um, but even at 9,400, the ceiling is so high. I definitely have interest in taking a shot at him. Um, so I, I, I like Edwards. Uh, I like one of playing one of Edwards or Russell. I still like uh, Kyle Anderson's price. And I think Gobert is in play as well at 7,200. And, you know, I, I just think everything in this game should be treated like it's a, it's a fantasy potential gold mine. And on the other side, uh, look, Nurkic, Lillard, they raised his price because of the monster game the other day. But uh, 
but Nurkic is, is mildly interesting to me. Um, even against Gobert, maybe he gets he gets uh, more minutes there. I'm having trouble more on the Portland side finding the plays that I like on the run back, but I really like the Minnesota side today. Yeah, I have Kyle Anderson as the best of the values on Minnesota, and it's funny. Uh, he did nice for me the other day. He was like he was like my man and my big my lineup that, that got there on uh, on Friday. He was like four percent owned or something like that. And uh, uh, he had a very, very nice game that kind of pulled that whole lineup together. And he's, you know, he's up now to 5,200, but I think he's, I mean, he's on the court. He's on the court at the end also, which is nice. Yep. Um, and I'd go bear as a reasonable play as well. Um, I'm kind of with you just on the whole idea of that you've talked about like many times recently that Edwards is just their projection on him is just broken, you know? Um, and whether, it, whether the, the median projection may or may not be broken. The fact is he always has a ceiling and, yeah. and, and in GPPs that you, you really have to, you know, you really have to take advantage of that. But as far as the projections, like in general go, it's open, it's Gobert and, um, and, and Kyle Anderson from Minnesota on Portland uh, is Lillard a good play at 10 to maybe um, he's going to be low owned. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't know. Uh, it seems uh, seems somewhat somewhat reasonable. Uh, boy, oh boy, that'd be interesting if I could actually get away with that. Uh, and that's pretty much all I have from the Portland side. Um, before we forget, by the way, we do have to go back because we didn't do Cleveland San Antonio. Um, oh, my bad. I, I must have. Uh, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. And the other thing, I just want to let you guys know again. I'm not the one prepare. Whatever. I just did. A, I just while we were doing this, did a relaunch of of the projections and stuff and. I, I guess that all these guys might be out for Atlanta because the guy, one of the guys you mentioned just kind of like popped like huge at Trent Forrest. Yeah. Um, at, to some degree, I see like a 40% ownership projection on him as well. Um, at, at, well, I guess if you're 3,100 and you project 20 points, I mean, that, that's what you're going to get, I suppose. Um, and we're also seeing a big ownership projection on, on Trey Young um yeah so, so i guess all these guys are going to be out um i would be surprised if at least a good portion of them aren't yeah so again it it, it it's to mo- something to monitor i'm also seeing uh in a congo like you said like you like you hinted at like popping a little more than i thought and at 20 percent plus ownership i guess maybe capella could be out I, I don't know well but then again if capella is a highly projected guy too so uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to go back well, we, we're gonna go back anyway but we'll we'll yeah. if we get to live we'll We'll examine that again. It's a it's a rough spot, man, because people are out and it's a tough and it's not a back to back and all this stuff. So it's a really um, tough team that has the most blowout wins in the NBA. You know what? Now I see why I'm Trent Forrest would be projected awesome. so high because I, I don't think did he not play yesterday. No, he like, oh, he did play. Okay, I was gonna say if he didn't play that many minutes, it's like a perfect opportunity for him to play like forty. You know what I mean? He can like, play forty anyway. Like it's they, okay. he's meaningless to their team in their future, so okay. they can play him just. They, they don't need okay. to worry about protecting him or anything. Okay. Um, he's just a journeyman. Um, it feels weird when anytime there's a journeyman guy who's very low fantasy point per dollar is the highest projected guy in the slate. So it's just something we, we're going to have to deal how with. Long, how long has he been in the league, Trent Forrest? I, I don't. I thought he seemed like a rookie to me. No, he's not a rookie. Um, Trent Forrest. Let me just guess. Uh, let me take a look real quick. And and sorry, not guess. I was just going to say. Um, yeah, it's only his third. It's, I guess it's only his third year, his third team. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, so yeah, he was twenty twenty, but he's not like a high. He was never like a a top prospect, you know, guy who's going to do much offense. He's just a defense, the three and D guy, basically. Um, anyway, for what the, for what it's worth, you can't get mad if he stands in the corner most of the times. That's what you're going to get a lot of. Although he's been, he did look active the last few games. All right, uh, we have to go back to Cleveland and San Antonio. You want to do that now? Yeah. Um, okay, so what's his name? The other day, I uh, did decently, Lavert. Uh, we have to see what's going on with Mitchell, obviously. Um, questionable today. He's missed the last two in a row. Uh, with any luck, you get that news at a reasonable hour. Um, because if he is out, then it's Garland, Mobley. He, I think even at 5K, I think Lavert's very reasonable. Um, so we'll just have to see. I mean, once again, we'll just have to see whether he's in or not. Kevin Love, 4,800. Is that okay? I'm not sure. Um, San Antonio, Zach Collins again. Charles Bassey, maybe. 
3,900. Nothing else seems to be popping for me. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I like, look, what, if Mitchell plays, I like Mitchell. Um, if he's out, I, I'll go back to, to Levert and, and Garland, and I'll include Chetty Osman in some of my builds too. Um, again, higher right weight range of outcomes, but he's 3,900 and certainly has a ceiling. Um, I think Kevin Love would get a boost if, if, if Mitchell's out. Really hard to, to analyze the game, though, without knowing who's playing yet. Um, one thing is, though, that Jared Allen is probably just on his own, just a good play at just 7K, and regardless of any of this stuff, just because of how they guard bigs. And on the San Antonio side, I have nothing as a priority in this tough matchup. So I'm not really getting to anyone at the moment um, unless we unless we get some guys out or something. Uh, yeah, n- nobody, nobody who's especially stands out. I guess you could make an argument for Sohan if he's in um, or Collins, but not not my favorite. All well, right. Let me, just, let, me, let me touch on FanDuel for just a second. So sure. again, I want to look and see. Oh, wait, we still have it. We still have a, we still have another game. Sorry about yeah. that. Boy, this this is a train wreck. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, because it was funny because when I was going to say, oh, well, let me check out some Fanduel, like what's different. The first thing I was going to notice was that Kawhi again is a is a better plan Fanduel than DraftKings. And I'm like, boy, did we, we did we not talk about the Clippers yet? I'm like, okay, so <laughs> that's why I didn't even notice there was one game. Yeah. Left. Um. All right. So Boston at Clippers. Um. I don't know. Brogdon, forty nine hundred. Is that good value? Maybe. Um, Tatum, 11-1. I, I think I'd rather play Trey, Ja, or even get up to Luke, or maybe even play Lillard. But, I mean, especially if Kawhi is, is in, and especially if, uh, what's his name, if Paul George is in. I Listen, I, I know, you know, Tatum's playing whatever, but, and maybe Kawhi and, and Paul George aren't what they used to be, whatever, defensively, but Still, I mean, they probably will do a decent enough job that that'll make eleven one seem kind of seem kind of fishy for Tatum. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you got? You got anything in this game at all? Um, this is a tough one. Uh, I think Brogdon is in play. Um, he's probably my favorite play on the Boston side, and I think that you you could always you consider Jason Tatum or Brown. I think Brown is looks a little more reasonable because the price. And then the Clippers side, I actually think a low owned Paul George is not a bad idea here. Uh, He's been unbelievable. It's the fourth game in six nights, which is a little weird because they they brought him back with this the whole situation coming up where they I mean, they, they've been playing like they they, they played the, the fifth, the seventh, the eighth, the tenth and now the twelfth. And that's a lot of games. So but they've been resting the other guys. So Paul George has been awesome uh, the last two games, especially. But with Kawhi back now and Kawhi did play the last one as well. I I I'd still think that Paul George is in play for me. So he's you know, maybe as a low owned play to, you know, the late night hammer thing. I think that he's right there with these other guys who are in that nine K the Anthony Edwards plays the Jalen Brown. I think they're, they're similar enough, but I think that Paul George, I like a little less than Edwards, but I do think that he's got the upside to, uh, to potentially play him against the Celtics team that, well, as great as they've been offensively, it's not that they're bad defensively. They just play so fast that their, their goal is to outscore you. So you're going to have some opportunities on the other side. Um, really impressed by just everything the Celtics do. I know they had to loss the other night against Golden State. Doesn't doesn't change anything about how incredible their season's been. Um, yeah, I, I think it's mostly Paul George for me in this game and, and maybe Brogdon. That's pretty so, much it. So this is funny. So, I, again, um, I was going to do uh, – and I'll do it. I may as well do it anyway. So I want to do a Saberson build just to, like, kind of show you guys what yeah. it would look like now. And then just to – just to remind you guys about how I don't want to say relevant, how different like a new look is from like the 6 p.m. look, even within the different sites and different projections. I was wondering why I was getting such a big ownership projection on some of these, some of these players from Atlanta spe- specifically. And even like the, even the sites that we rely on sometimes, you know, they, I don't want to say screw around, but they, whatever during the day. And listen, I love Sabres and whatever. And I'm looking, what the hell is going on here? And I'm seeing that if you look at the Atlanta ownership, they project for them. I'm seeing, 85 percent for Trey Young, 68. Yeah, it's not going to be that. Capella and stuff like that. So what's happening is these are getting kind of like filtered into my projections a little bit. I didn't like go to manually tweak them yet. So right. I'm like, boy, I wonder why all these guys are so 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 uh, I own. I'm like, because 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 obviously Saberson's kind of screwing around at noon. Also, just like a lot of people are. Um, so yeah, so I do encourage everybody to come back at like 6 p.m. when things are going to be a little tighter. But just just for just for fun. 
I want to build, let's do a 150 max build. This will be Saber Sim shout out for the, for, for, for noon. I wonder what we're going to get. I would guess a hundred percent forest. Let's just take a look. Uh, no, that is not true. I'd be getting only 30% forest. And do you know why? Because, because he's projected to be owned so high. Because he's projected to be owned so high. That is correct. Yep. Um, so again, it's, it's all what you put in. Um, and if you if you went by these ownership projections, you get much less Atlanta, but you'd still get 30%. Uh, you'd still get 30% uh, Trent Forrest. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Anderson would be well-owned. Monty Morris, Abdia. Then, then, uh, then go bear. Um, those would be the highest owned guys. Um, but again, and that's and that's one of the cool things about uh, Saber Sims. It does factor in like ownership, which very, very few places do um, to to build upside lineups. So um, yep. we'll do more of that uh, in another video, and we'll do more. You know, we'll do more breakdown of the slate. You want to give any core? You want to give any cores? Yeah, 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 yeah. What I've got early as priorities, um, Avdia, um, and I'm also open to the possibility of Goodwin. I basically one guy from Washington minimum. I think I'm probably going to end up with two guys from Atlanta, but I would rather it be the cheap guys because I'm worried about that game staying close. But I do think that Trey, we'd have to take the shot at least with with all the guys that that could be out. He could just go nuts um, and keep them in the game. Although it's hard on the back to back. Um, for it, you know, it's forest being the obvious one right now, but I don't even know that I want to do that to be honest with you. Uh, Poku and Jalen Williams, one of those two, I think, are in a good spot. I think it's always hard to guess the OKC stuff, but their prices are hard to ignore and they can easily, um, you know, like I said, eight, 10x their kind of price. I have Anderson, uh, Kyle Anderson as a priority, but I want to say that you could play McDaniels or Noel also, I think, is an interesting pivot. Um, and then one of Gobert, Edwards, or Russell, or two of them, because I do like that matchup against uh, Portland. And then I'm open to a low on Paul George on the late slate. So a lot of my game, a lot of my stuff is on the later stuff. But I do think that the the, the basic thing is two two from Atlanta, probably minimum uh, by the end, and Washington at least one probably. But uh, gonna have to see who's playing before we totally firm up that stuff. I yeah, I think I think Atlanta is gonna be. I think Atlanta is the key to. I mean, you got you got to be able to figure out Atlanta, but I think the, they'll give you most of it. But but it's at eight o'clock, which I don't like. Um, yeah, I don't think you're going to get it until seven thirty, um, yep. which is annoying because this Washington value is probably the next best value. Um, I think. I mean, if you don't know who's playing for Atlanta, you do have to make choices about about Avdia and and Monty Morris or whatever. Did you did you mention anything about Gaffer? Do you like him at all in that game? It's it's the exact wrong kind of thing because like oh, okay. he's I mean he's not getting the the minutes I mean we just had nine bodies for them and he still only played eighteen minutes in that game um, okay. and now you've got a full you've got not their whole team but you're gonna you have you know every single player they have, they have the maximum players available um, and you don't really need to play big against Washington but if Porzingis gets two fouls like. Gafford, I would just, I would just grade him as a as a large field tournament, you know, taking a shot. He's so good per minute um, at times, and it is, I guess, it is a good matchup. So I, I, I think Gafford's okay. I just think that it's, it's just you got to just know you're gambling when you play him. <laughs> I guess that's it. Um, and he was in one of my big ones the other night, and you know, didn't didn't really get there, but wasn't terrible either. Uh, anyway, but yeah, I think this is a, it's going to be an interesting slate. We'll be live at six Eastern to go over it. We'll also talk through the, uh, the football slate and uh, the, the, you know, the showdown and sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, sounds good. All right. Good luck everybody. And we'll see you at six.